Gue cerita sih nanti luar-luar. Ada opro atau nanti? Eh, kau nyewer, bikas, kau nyai wear. Okay. Good. Yeah. Mm. Oké. Okay. Zit een van jouw spannen wat hier zo is? Ja, ik weet bedoel, hij is hier zo op die grond. Oké. Okay. Is jij Sven? Ja, ik zal het Sven zijn. Oké. Okay. Nee, nee, hij heeft nog geen begin. Nee. Goed. Ja. Dat is recht. Ja. Yes. Yes. Goed. Dank je, Bikus. Bye bye.
Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have just witnessed the airstrike from both the Hawks lead-in trainers as well as the Gripen multi-role fighter aircraft on both the belligerent mobile reserve as well as the headquarters, which signifies the beginning of what you will see later on as the demonstration. The Hawks have pre-positioned themselves for the gunship and have engaged the remnants of the mobile reserve with heavy 
machine gun fire to keep the suppressive effect of own forces fire on the belligerent. Aircraft, uh, throwing bombs on the rebel positions. They then uh, moved away, and th that was uh, followed by Hawk uh, lead in fighter aircraft also bombing the rebel areas. They then circled the area and came back um, to attack the belligerents with 20 millimeter gunfire. At the moment, now we have halted the demonstration. And we just want to give the opportunity to our president um, to take up his position and then the program will continue.
Yo, please, if you can. Sure. Oh, shit. Children. As Sorry for buggering you around, eh? Because? Uh, nee, is jou koe. Weet jy dat eldere nou hier so is? Oké. Okay. Goed. Oké. Okay. Oké. Okay. Goed. Dankie. Check, check, check. Uh, can you guys hear me? One, two, three, four, five. Can you hear me? How do you pronounce it again? Lohasha. 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 So, because you have to... Is a Hebrew word meaning peace. This exercise was aimed at an 
Okay. Can you increase the volume a bit? Okay. Here protection will be made available at the ticket area. Please ensure that you make use thereof. Okay. Our Bluetooth facilities are okay. available at our east. Please I'm not sure you can't see. They start from 600 meters in front of you with the prominent road that stretches to the north and they stretch it to about So what's the idea now? So Further north, the the past, past the left slope of the pronounced series of hills that resembles Table Mountain, five kilometers away yeah. at York. Okay. And then the next one I think is, is that, that the one where we'll be sitting with Yaakov? Yeah. Okay. And then one other thing. And the assistant fire firefighter. These targets will be assessed with fire and maneuver from the south. More details about that will be continued. I think I need a side name or something. Luhata. 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 Hello? I look happy. Sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> No, we're just going to go like um, the Uganda, combat training center, the South African combat training. As well as rapid deployment capability three, our forces from okay. Angola, Kenya, Nigeria, and the Republic of South Africa. We want to confirm that this demonstration is part of the training of the force. All soldiers are trained and qualified for their different roles and tasks. Okay. And enhances aspirate recall. Let us observe. I mean, when you're done, you stop sure. using that mic. Okay. 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 Cool. I need to say what's in this guy. Okay.
show this lesson that this is an area that they call the inhabit. demonstration will take place just under two hours and then the second part of the program will be
If you hear her, it's still a long cue, isn't it? Yeah. Luhat. 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 To you from uh, Luhat, there, the South African Army's uh, combat training center here yeah, in the Northern Cape. There is listening of um, the the bus saying of the That have started back in October the 17th up until this moment it has been three weeks and quite an interesting day in terms of the updates of exactly whether this um, this force what happened yeah? oh the linguenda okay Was it good? Do I look okay? Yeah. Ah, no, if I look okay. Okay, it's easy sharing. It's good. Mamzu. I let you see how young they are. This thing is not helping. Continue with a simultaneous engagement by the artillery on both 
Sorry. So what are we doing? The same thing that I did earlier. Yeah, but Ash, this the audio is terrible. What are we doing next? Are we, are we doing the same thing as we did earlier? Well, right now the demonstrations are currently underway here in Lohota, where the African standby force uh, combatants are right here demonstrating what they've learned through all the exercises that have been taking place since the 17th of October. Today is obviously quite a significant day as um, they wrap up, uh, wrap up those exercises and um, everybody will be looking to um, next month whether this uh, uh, force will be fully operational. Remember that it has been postponed since 2008. The first deadline was back in 2008 that the African um, standby force should be operational, but now it's been postponed to 2015. And everybody will be looking to AU Commission Chairperson Nkosa Zanadlamini Zuma next year when she delivers the keynote address at um, the AU Summit in Gigali, whether the African standby force is fully operational and whether it can be deployed to uh, countries that are currently experiencing civil wars right here in Africa. Well, right now, as I indicated, the demonstrations are currently underway. Everybody, look at, everybody quite um, focused on the demonstrations and what um, the Defence Force has been has been has, has learned over um, the past um, three weeks. Um, and uh, early next, um, a bit later on, I will be joined by Captain uh, TNS uh, Yako, or who will give us some illustration, exactly or description of what is currently happening. It's back to you guys in studio. Eldrin staan die landsmijn nou, hulle het nou gevraag, ons moet nou voor hier by die camera's kom staan. En Eldrin staan die landsmijn.
Okay. He wants, he wants us, he wants, he wants us to sit and talk. And just keep, keep coming to Okay, we'll do that. Okay. Tennyson. 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 Okay. Good. Right. Mention this red smoke and green smoke, and the vehicles moving again. Also, what's going on? I don't know if you want okay. to speak. Yeah, you're to something if you like. Stand by. It's going to be a loud bang now. Okay. <laughs> hey, see, don't mess with us, eh? <laughs>
Okay, well, we continue with the coverage from uh, the Luhutla Combat Training Center where the African Standby Force is currently illustrating the, what they have learned throughout the three weeks that they've been here at the center. And right now, I can tell you that the field that we're looking on right now resembles uh, a war zone. I'm joined here by um, General Yaku Tienazen. Sorry, it is Captain. <laughs> I have to get used to these ranks. <laughs> Captain, can you just quickly speak us through exactly what's currently happening with all the red and the pink smoke that we see now? Certainly, Aldrin. Uh, what has happened now, the rapid deployment capability of the African Standby Force, which consists out of Angola, U Uganda, Mozambique and Namibia, uh, has, has started with a motorized attack on the enemy. Uh, you will notice there's red smoke and green smoke on the battlefield. The red smoke indicate that that's areas where the enemy are, is, and then uh, the green smoke where the green forces will attack from. Now, what also happened is they now came up to a minefield, and we sent a vehicle, which we call the Plof Other, that sent a rocket-propelled explosives over a, a large area. That then explodes, and it opens up an area where the vehicles can drive through. Now this is a motorized infantry attack and as you can see at present the uh, soldiers has disengaged from the um, infantry, infantry fighting vehicles and infantry personnel carriers and they are now walking next to the vehicles attacking the enemy with small caliber fire. So just basically speaking on what we're currently seeing at the moment, you indicated that the red smoke is for indicating where the enemy is. That is correct, because we also got artillery bombardment that you can hear the whole time. That's 120 millimeter mortars that are being fired on that area where the red smoke is. And um, the, the, the blue greenish smoke that we're looking at now? The, the, it's actually green. Uh, the green smoke is to indicate where your own forces are now going to engage the enemy from. Quite, quite, quite a lot of noise here. As I indicated earlier on, that um, the field that we're currently looking at resembles uh, a war zone. And w w where we're currently standing from, um, looking at the troops, I can see there's a, th there's a line over there. What's happening over there? Well, the line is the line of advance. Uh, you call it your front line of own troops. That is where they are now. So you, because you're firing, all, everybody is firing with live ammunition, you have to be in line not to shoot your own forces. I can also just mention that before this, we had a uh, air attack first by the Gripen aircraft, uh, our main fighter, and then also by the Hawk lead-in attack aircraft. Um, this was then followed by um, the artillery bombardment as well as mechanized artillery firing, uh, 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 mechanized infantry and armor firing at the enemy positions. And, and, and what, what was that that I just looked at now? That just went up in the sky and landed next to some of the, of, of the defense force guys that you just mentioned now? That is, once again, it's flares that you shoot, um, just to, uh, that would simulate if it gets dark, those flares will give you light in, 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 at night to see where you're going to and who you're fighting against. Okay, well, well, we'll continue with the coverage here from um, Le Hotel, as I indicated earlier on, um, the African standby force, illustrating all the, uh, all the exercises and what they've learned uh, throughout their three-week uh, stay here in South Africa in the Northern Cape, and um, let's just quickly speak about uh, the components of the African Defense Force quickly. Uh, we know that there's a civilian component, of course, and there is the police component, and then there is uh, the military component. Just quickly speak us through that. Yes, uh, certainly. Uh, as you rightfully said, there's three main components, military, civilian, and police. And the scenarios that you work on is a scenario six um, that is a um, rapid deployment capability, a war fighting capability of the African Union. And that would be mandated by the chairperson of the African Union Commission to say this country is destabilized. You need military, robust military power to go in there to stabilize the area. Uh, so first of all, you would go in there. Once you have stabilized the country, neutralized the enemy or destroyed them, then the more bigger important part will come, which is then the scenario five. Now, in scenario five, according to the AU, is then your peace 
enforcement uh, or peacekeeping capability and this is much more your civilian and police components civilians looking at various aspects from the civilian community looking at health and and, and protection of child children and women um, corruption um, diseases such as cholera that might break out and then the police obviously playing a typical uh, police role in, in, in this uh, destabilized country that you are now trying to stabilize. Mm. And just for the benefit of our viewers at home, just uh, to get an understanding of the um, African uh, standby force is that um, they are deployed in the five regions of um, Africa, that is east, west, south, north, as well as central. So each region will be getting about um, 5,000 personnel. That is correct. Your, your troop teams will be a brigade size per, per one of the per uh, region of the five regions. So yes, in total, when the African standby force is totally commissioned, it will be an excess of 25,000 troops. Mm. You know, one question that I had, for instance, is um, the, the, the rapid response unit. What, what, what role do they play? Well, the rapid response unit should be able to deploy in 14 days. Now, th that's, that is very, very fast mm. to project a, a brigade-sized force into a foreign country. But that's the whole idea. You, you want to minimize the casualties of, civilian, of the civilian population in a war-torn uh, country. And um, in case of, uh, of, of natural disasters, what role would um, the African standby force play? Yeah, the African standby force is not there to replace other uh, peace support operations and, 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 and um, normal disaster management. So um, th that is not its role. However, obviously, if the politicians hire up the side to utilize it in that role, it is their prerogative and um, the militaries and the civilian and, and, and police components will then just follow orders. Okay, okay we'll go back to the technicalities and um, the composition of the African standby force. Right now, let's just focus on what's currently happening on the screen. We can see um, the military vehicles uh, making some advancement. What's happening now at the moment? And who are these guys? I can see there's um, a Red Cross on one of the vehicles. Is this the ambulances coming through? Yes, sir. This is the ambulance and um, the other vehicles now, what's happening now is now the attack by the African Standby Force 2, which is Battle Group Bravo. And, and this force consists of uh, uh, military uh, personnel from South Africa, Rwanda, Uganda and Niger. So now they're taking over from, uh, from, from this, from another, for another attack from the uh, Rapid Deployment Capability 1. What? You mentioned that um, the different countries seem to have different roles. Is it only because of this um, um, illustration or this exercise that that is, or does it play it on a different way when, for instance, let's say they are deployed into the different regions? Because now we understand that this is a small team, just um, about 5,000 um, personnel who've been here for, for the training since uh, October the 17th. Yes. yes, the composition will be more or less what it is what we see here today. Um, so the vehicles is the type of vehicles that, that will be utilized, the countries, the type of countries and the role they will play is, is this type of scenario. When you do exercises, you always want to stay as realistic as possible to the real life scenarios. And um, although it's not always 100% uh, possible, but that's what everything possible we want to do that. And, and that is why the composition of these forces would be, uh, for, for, for SADC region, would be more or less as it is now. And, and how do you guys decide that, um, let's say for instance, um, Angola, this is the role that Angola will be playing, and this is the role South Africa will be playing, this is the role that Lesotho will be playing? Um, this has been decided long ago. Um, so uh, the, 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 that decision has been made, the staff papers has been written, the plans has been written, written, and so what we do now is just the execution of those plans. So that has already been uh, decided. Okay. Well, as I indicated earlier on, um, that um, President Jacob Zuma will be delivering the keynote address. That's the second part of the program. Um, we will also hear from the, um, the, the African Union Commissioner for Peace and Security. And I guess all important is whether this, um, the African Standby Force um, uh, General will be ready for, 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 for deployment by December.
Yes, you're quite right. Um, th th this is exactly why this exercise has been held now, to, um, to evaluate the state of readiness of the African Standby Force and also then simultaneously to exercise its rapid deployment capability in order to ascertain the gaps and requirements for achieving full operational capability by the end of December. Um, we from the military side believe we have achieved our objectives. I also believe that the form police units have and the civilian component. So um, yes, now it's we are ready. Now it's from on the higher political level to, to make the decisions if, when and where the African standpoint. And just a quick correction there. Um, if you've just joined us, we're speaking um, to Captain Giyako <laughs> I've been referring him to as General. But thank you so much for all the information that we've been getting from you, uh, uh, Captain. And, and in terms of uh, airstrikes, uh, what happens there? Well, the airstrikes obviously will also depend on the areas you're mo moving in. But uh, once again, as I said, as realistic as possible. So the airstrikes that came in from a, a fighter aircraft, a principal fighter aircraft, the Gripens in, in this case, uh, followed by lead, uh, lead in attack fighter aircraft. It's a, a slightly slower aircraft with more precision um, uh, gunfire to, to support the troops on the ground better. And we can see like right now uh, it seems like there are a few bombs going off no once again what has happened now is the um, battle group alpha has now taken over from battle group bravo because they have initiated the firefight and they have dispersed the enemy now once again there's red smoke uh, it's much closer to the troops as you can see because your enemy is now on the ground you're much closer into combat you're using small arms caliber uh, sm small caliber firing and um, now you want to uh, ensure that the enemy does not regroup. This is why the new battle group has now come over, come in to take over. Because remember, your first battle group ammunition might be spent now, the, the barrels might be warm, and now you're going into your next phase of attack. So, um, Captain Tienes, can you just quickly speak us through what will be happening now? Right. Um, as, as, as we can see, the, the next attack has been quite successful. You will also notice this uh, yellow smoke. Now, that yellow smoke indicates the front line of own troops. Um, the red smoke, once again, indicates that the enemy is very close to you.
and the green smoke indicates now to the your other forces um, where your own forces are not to shoot in that direction um, by now if there is still belligerence running around we will now call in Roy Falk attack helicopters to come and uh, clear the ground uh, it might be that there is now some regrouption uh, or regrouping of uh, some of the rebel forces and you need a uh, uh, high firepower and quick mobility to come and take them out and therefore you be the Roy Falk attack helicopters will now be coming in firing missiles which is uh, there you can hear it happen and you can see how effective it is it is it's an area weapon so it, uh, it, it uh, you don't want to fire that close to your own troops followed by this now the Roy Falk attack helicopters will start with 20 millimeter gunfire close air support to your front um, soldiers your soldiers in the front line and I guess um, with, with, with every situation that um, the force will be facing, there will be a different strategy. Oh yes, absolutely, absolutely. Um, you don't just go into one attack and, and find it, it's over. Um, there might be various things. As we saw, there was uh, minefields, there could be booby traps, there could be um, uh, 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 troops that are trying to, uh, excuse me, rebels that's trying to encircle you, or, or even um, uh, an ambush that could be laid for you. So you have to take all these contingencies into consideration to ensure the safety of your own troops and um, to ensure that you try and, uh, with an intense firefight, to finish the battle as soon as possible. And, and just out of interest from my side, <laughs> is um, it's, it's very loud here. Yes. Um, the combats themselves, what do they do in this case? Do they have ear protection or what, what happens? No, you don't have ear protection because you need to hear the orders that is, uh, has been shouted and given over the radios. So um, yeah, that's part of war fighting. That's part of, of being a soldier. Yeah, unfortunately, that's that's the thing. It comes, it, co it, comes, it comes with the game. It comes with the game, yes. Sir. As you can see there, there is now two Roy Falk attack helicopters in the close air support and they are firing with their 20 millimeter cannons towards the belligerents. You will also notice uh, below the helicopters there's another battle group forming and they are um, infantry fighting vehicles and uh, infantry p p p uh, personnel carriers. They're firing with a slightly higher caliber, your 12.7 millimeter calibers, uh, caliber machine guns as well as 20 millimeter cannons.
Below the Roy Falk helicopters, we've got the Roy Tuck, Roy Cut um, armored vehicles. Um, these these armored vehicles uh, have got 76 millimeter cannons in which they are engaging the enemy and the belligerents with. Once again, it is a high intensity fire, and the idea is to ensure that the enemy is completely neutralized or even destroyed to ensure that one can then go over into your peacekeeping phase. As with the previous phases, once the armor now has uh, finished their fighting part and the heavy, heavy artillery, the infantry fighting vehicles with um, the infantry personnel carriers are now also moving into the area where the troops will dismount and then engage the enemy on the ground.
Zeit äh, full integration has now been achieved between the Hamas guards as well as the infantry. The infantry will now take over the fire from the Hamas guards and ensure that they do the assault and end up mopping the objectives and will spread them onto the ground. This is done to ensure that as the intensity of you will notice that there is flares in the air. Those are 16 millimeter illumination mortars to show the troops that has dismounted now to illuminate the area where the fighting is taking place now. The infantry soldiers are now what is referred to as mopping up the area to ensure that if there are any other belligerents hiding or running to once again neutralize them and disarm them. Ladies and gentlemen, as information continues to flow on the battlefield, we have got some good news. Our downed pilot has been located and is currently um, under the eye of our combat search and rescue uh, gentlemen who are in the air. Our pathfinders and special forces from South Africa and Lesotho will now jump and go and secure his position to ensure that none of the belligerents will get hold of him or hold him hostage. During this scenario the now, on, one of the helicopter pilots the has been shot down. And uh, fortunately, the pathfinders and uh, special forces from Lesotho and South Africa has uh, identified where this uh, pilot is. They're going to his assistance now to try and secure the area and to see um, how they can get to him.
gentlemen, after a successful completion of the operation on the objectives in front of you, our victorious forces will now be withdrawing back to our position where they will stop the vehicles and participate in a parade here in front of you. In the meantime, our team of jumpers will jump shortly. We have got a team of seven parachutists with three special forces operators from Lesotho, as well as four pathfinders from South Africa. They are ably led by Colonel Martin Khopane, who will land in front of the main grandstand and will deliver a scroll Whilst to the Whilst the forces are now pulling out and returning, our focus will now move over to the pilot that has been shot down. The Special Forces has located the member. A smoke grenade has been uh, lighted to show where he is, and they will now be. They will now jump out of the aircraft that's overhead, and then um, parachute as close as possible to the down pilot to see how what uh, assistance he require and medical assistance should be given to the pilot. The parachutists are dropped from a Casa 212, which belongs to Lesotho. Parachutes have just jumped, and as you can see, the canopy has now opened, and they are now maneuvering towards the area. Well, we continue with the coverage of um, the African Standby Force demonstrating what they've learned over the past three weeks while here in South Africa in the Northern Cape. Um, will the Standby Force be ready for deployment by January next year? That's the deadline that has been set. And as you can see right now, we're watching visuals of um, the, the paratroops, parachutes coming out of the, out of the sky. Uh, and uh, I'm still joined by Captain Yaku. Captain Yaku, can you just basically speak us through what's happening now? Yes, the, the parachutists uh, are from Special Forces um, from South Africa as well as from Lesotho, and they have uh, jumped out of a Casa 212, which is a uh, fixed-wing aircraft from Lesotho. Um, they on their way to the ground to secure the area where the pilot has been shot down and to see if he needs uh, medical assistance so that we can try and evacuate him, evacu evacuate him by the most uh, quickest possible means and safest possible means to t uh, get him out of the danger area. Uh, j just just for, qu for quick clarity, um, I see um, wha some of the parachutes are red, some are white. Is there any significance to that or is it just a coincidence? Um, no, the, the red parachutists are from South Africa and the white ones are from uh, the Lesotho. Okay. And you also indicated that um, they would come down to come and see whether 
um, one of the combatants has been injured or some is, 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 is that it? Yes, uh, the, uh, the scenario was that a helicopter pilot has been shot down and um, then they located and found, found out that he is still alive and that's why the special forces had to para jump in now to, to try and save him and see if they can get him medical assistance. Would, would they be carrying medical equipment at the time as well? Yes, yes they do have uh, first aid uh, medical equipment and um, they will obviously uh, stabilize the patient and then call in uh, probably air support to come and uh, uh, medical evacuate the downed pilot. I have to say quite a quite a wonderful shot there of a parachute coming from the sky with the South African flag um, right behind him and right here applause uh, from everybody else here watching um, this uh, display. Yes, uh, and it is very nice for the people to applauding this uh, parachutist because it's very precision jumping. It looks easy. It is not that easy. And they, these are highly trained and highly specialized parachutists. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, all the paratroopers are on the ground except the commander, General Kofanu who will also be carrying the African Union flag with him. People that carry it, and I think also to give a little bit Is, um, Captain Yanko, is this now the end of, of, of the demonstration? Because I can see some of the armoured vehicles now coming back to the front. No, no, the pilot is still going to be extracted by means of helicopter. And, and after that, uh, the demonstration uh, will be followed by the Rapid Deployment Capability 3, uh, which is the police and civilian um, demonstration. Um, the vehicles are just on their way back to form up. Uh, but they're not part of this uh, this demonstration. The demonstration is finished. They just wait for this uh, interaction to finish off, and then they will form up in front of the parade ground. Ladies and gentlemen, as we observe the activities here in front of you, we want to once again remind you that this is not just a demonstration by the military. The police are also part of the exercise and will now also continue. They are currently preparing to uh, come in. The Amica police will now display different facets of their capabilities and competencies. Their scenario will start with a group of dissatisfied citizens of Karana Republic protesting about their unhappiness not being part of the signing of a peace agreement. In the meantime, while the police are preparing themselves, the paratroopers here in front of you will be coming to the, uh, the podium where the scroll will be handed over by their commander, General Martin Kopani. Well, as you indicated earlier on, that um, the African standby force is made out of three components. We've got um, the military component, as well as the civilian and um, the police component. And that's what we're currently going to be focusing on. That is the third demonstration. Um, Captain Tienison, let's just, uh, let's just quickly go back to um, what you mentioned earlier on the significance 
of having um, the police as well as the civilian component of um, the standby force? Yes, as I mentioned earlier, the scenario six scenario, which is the same as the United Nations chapter six, seven, has now been completed. That is your war fighting site, and therefore that is now where the, the military has played their part. Um, now, for the scenario five or the United Nations chapter six scenario, you are going now into your peace keeping um, in a phase and that your main role play is the is civilian components supported by the police and still the military but not in such a big role as with the scenario six and um, s something that um, some some commentators have been mentioning as well is in terms of the training that um, the African stand uh, the African uh, uh, the African standby force is receiving that some of the training actually comes from outside of the African continent? Um, yes, there's been some assistance from the European Union uh, and from NATO, uh, but that is that is actually very limited. The majority of, of, of the expertise and the training and everything comes from, from within the African continent. So the demonstration displayed here um, will definitely go far. Will, will definitely go um, far to to really show that the days of um, the rebels are numbered. Yes, we do believe that. And uh, right from the start, when our heads of states came together years ago, they said the main thing was um, to have an African solution to African problems. And with this intense firefighting, and you could see the equipment that they used, the highly trained soldiers. I uh, think that we are definitely able to do just that. And the vision that the AU has is that by 2020 all guns will be silenced, that um, Africa won't have any civil wars or any wars um, going on in the African continent because with wars also comes great devastation because immediately after that devastation a country is pl plunged into, into, into economic devastation as well, that the economy suffers and most of all, um, it's those people on the ground who really bear the brunt of um, the civil wars that be taking place in the countries. So definitely this demonstration will go a long way in showing that um, Africa is capable and Africa will be deploying its own troops. And um, as uh, Captain Tinnison indicated earlier on, African solutions for African problems.
Gentlemen, so welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Exercise the money after the flu was executed based on the scenario of Karana, which is a fictitious country. The Karana scenario was developed by the United Nations Peace Support Operations Department for situations unique to Africa. Karana is a fictitious country situated within a fictitious island of Kisiwa. Karana was experienced in high scale conflict, which resulted in mass killings of the innocent population, humanitarian crisis, and grave circumstances threatening the country with genocide. Karana Defense Force was overwhelmed by the robust advance of the movement of the Karana to the capital city, Jalapa. The president, Jaco Gabo, approached the, the AU for assistance. Hence, the African Standby Force was mandated to conduct an African meeting in Karana or Amit. Well, right now, all the uh, vehicles that were used during this demonstration are now being lined up ahead of a parade that will be taking place during the second phase um, of today's event, uh, where President Jacob Zuma will also be delivering the keynote address here today. And right now, we can see the troops who are part of this demonstration also lining up. Uh, and um, quite distinctive uh, is that those green berets, uh, Captain Tennyson, is there any significance to that? Yes, absolutely. The Green Berets, um, you will see each country soldiers have their own uniforms, but the Green Berets shows that it's an African Union deployment. Um, it's the same as uh, similar to when the United Nations deploy, they will have blue, uh, blue Berets and, and uh, blue uh, combat helmets uh, where the African Union soldiers wear Green Berets and Green combat helmets. Right now we have a, a, a demonstration of a few protesters um, as part of this demonstration they are called the citizens of um, Karana. Just quickly speak us through that Captain. Yes, Karana is the fictitious country that was created to do this exercise and the intervention force is AMICA. And AMICA stands for African Union Mission in Karana. Um, as you mentioned earlier, to have peace in Africa your police and your civilian components should play and will play a much bigger role than your military. Because the military can just stabilize a country, but the police and your civilian components maintain it. And therefore, it is important now um, that, that in real life situations, you would have, for example, um, dissatisfied citizens and, and people trying to, to uh, create this order again. And that's why we want also want to show the important role that the police are playing here. And, and that role is um, around, for instance, uh, law enforcement, ensuring that uh, um, citizens abide to the laws of the country. Um, just speak us quickly through that. Does this mean that the police officers who are part of the African standby force can carry out arrests? Oh yes, definitely. They will, they will do uh, your, any uh, natural police duty that they would do in their country and also then on their memorandum of understanding of what they should do in the country where they will be deployed at. Um, that's also why we talk about a, full, uh, a formed police unit. So they're not going in as the Botswana police or the South African police or Angolese police, but they're going in as a formed police unit. And right now we can see um, the police um, going or coming towards um, the, the protesters from um, Karana as a captain um, Jenison has indicated earlier on um, they are protesting about their unhappiness of not being part of the signing of a peace agreement. What we see coming here is a crowd management pl platoon with uh, armored uh, police vehicles, which is called Nyalas, and that is specifically utilized in, uh, in areas where you've got demonstrations um, and, to, and to try and neutralize and defuse uh, possible uh, bad situations. Would you ever have a scenario, for instance, where a, where a region, let's say maybe SEDEC, would say that 
we don't really need military intervention, but we need the police to come and help us out. Um, it's very difficult for me to answer that question because that will obviously be made at political uh, level, uh, first on continental level by the African Union and then between the different uh, regional economic communities. So unfortunately I won't be able to, to um, say, uh, uh, say anything about that at this stage. police units that are involved here are from elements from the South African police and then from the Angolan police force that's being utilized for this demonstration. The scenario here is that it was originally a, an, um, a peaceful demonstration but they will notice that there are two instigators that are trying to turn this into a more violent crime. And that's why the police are now going into a more uh, aggressive mode of action towards the demonstrators. As you can see, the police has now taken the two instigators that was trying to uh, take, uh, take this into a violent situation. They've um, arrested them and they've taken them away from the rest of the crowd. The idea is always to minimize casualties. And just for the benefit of our viewers at home, this is of course uh, a mock scenario as we indicated earlier on that this is um, the African Standby Forces Police Unit or the component which is demonstrating that they've learned throughout their three-week stay right here in South Africa in the Northern Cape. And these are just um, an indication of what the capabilities are when eventually they are de deployed to different um, um, African states should those countries um, need the assistance of the African standby force. see one of the people trying to run away now and the dog unit has now been dismounted to catch him. Captain Tennyson, would you be able to speak us through um, some of the some of the equipment as uh, well as the ammunition that um, the standby force police unit will be carrying at such a demonstration? Well, uh, firstly, they would uh, try to utilize non-lethal weapons. Firstly, uh, tear gas and, and rubber bullets, but they also will have sharp point ammunition, as was demonstrated now with the last demonstration, when um, things turn really, uh, really violent and 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 life uh, life endangering for themselves as well as for members from the local population. It is all just small arms calibers, which is small arms and hand weapons, and and then. Uh, small uh, automatic rifles so they will be utilizing. On the screen you will notice now that one of the police officers pointing his rifle in the direction that is just to protect their own units while they're trying to uh, evacuate the people that has been injured now and this is just a, a, a position in self-defense by this police uh, police officer. You will also see that there is now a scenario where there might be a possible bomb 
and a member from the police uh, EOD team, uh, explosive ordnance device personnel are going to neutralize the bomb. Um, well, uh, Captain Tennyson, we're also noticing that um, that he's not, he, he doesn't have any gloves on. Is there any significance to this, or is is is, is isn't it dangerous to to be handling a bomb without gloves? Well, handling any bomb is dangerous, even with protective gear. Unfortunately, um, you know, you need your hands because it's very dangerous. The improvised explosives that you might be working with and it's uh, intricate and, and fine work so unfortunately for the poor man that needs to defuse the bomb it is quite dangerous but he, he cannot wear any protective uh, gear on his hands What has happened now is that uh, the member from the EOD team, explosive ordnance disposal personnel, placed a explosive next to what would be a bomb, even if you're not sure it is, and then they moved to a safe distance and then they detonated, and so to neutralize that bomb. And um, that um, the red smoke is it also? Uh, does it bear the same this, the same indication as we heard earlier on uh, when? Uh, the military troops were, were, were demonstrating. No, no, in this case it's a different type and, and in this case the smoke is just there to, to hide the police uh, uh, from, from, from uh, possible demonstrators and then to protect them to get away safely from, from the, uh, the area. Well, right now on our screens we can see um, a chopper which seems to be carrying water. Um, what's going to be happening right now, Captain? All right, this is not part of the demonstration, but this is real life support. What has happened with all the firing taking place in the range, uh, the felt has set fire and they are flying now um, just to extinguish the fire. Where the 
Well, what a great display of um, force there, Captain um, Dennison, as we seem to be wrapping up the first phase of, of um, today's event. Yes, and um, I'm, I'm glad to say that I think everything went extremely well. Uh, but you know, we've got the dash in, in the defense squad that says, train as you fight and fight as you train. And therefore, what you've seen here is it, what you will see in real life scenarios.
gentlemen, we now hand over to Mr. Bob. Minister of Defense from the Republic of Zimbabwe and the ministers from other countries in different regions of our continent. The AU Commissioner for Peace and Security Special Representative of the AU Commission Chairperson for Amani Africa Defense Force, and Police Chiefs, the Force Commander for Amani Africa. exercise participants from military, police, and civilian components, members of the diplomatic corps, and representatives of international partners, ladies and gentlemen. It gives me great pleasure to join you at this landmark occasion <clears throat> for Africa. Today, we bring to a close a historic exercise that is moving Africa forward in the pursuit of peace, stability, and security. We welcome all of you to this ceremony. As we conclude Amani Africa II field training exercise, we wish to extend our heartfelt condolences to the families of the late surgeons Silo, Stephen, Motisane, and David Mukhele, Motau, who are participants in this exercise. May the families find fortitude in the knowledge and memory of these gallant fighters who passed on in the service of their country and the continent. 
fellow Africans, this exercise demonstrates that Africa is serious about peace and that the continent is also serious about investing in peace. We often proclaim that we want African solutions to African problems. Through this exercise, we are demonstrating that readiness to solve our problems in the continent. We are indeed proud to proclaim today that Amani Africa too has been a tremendous success. We have taken a significant step forward towards bringing the African stand by force and its rapid deployment capability into operation. We have committed ourselves to silencing the gun on our continent by 2020 in alignment with our commitment to Agenda 2063. However, we still need to be prepared to effectively intervene in situations of crisis in order to stabilize our countries when we need and when the call arrives. The reality is that some countries on our beloved continent are still experiencing conflict, strife, and war. The people of the Central African Republic, South Sudan, Mali, Libya, Somalia, and Eastern Democratic Republic of the Congo still live in the hope of achieving peace. We therefore have a duty as the leadership of the continent to assist sister countries to achieve peace. That is what makes this exercise so important. It is particularly gratifying that the five regions of our continent were represented at this exercise through the regional economic communities and their brigades. SADC, the East African Standby Force, North Africa, the Regional Command, ECOWAS, and the volunteering nations of ASRIC, the African capacity for immediate response to crisis have all participated in this historic exercise, which is the first of its kind. Apart from testing harmonization, this exercise has gone a long way towards strengthening cooperation between the African Union and the regional mechanisms for the purposes of future peacekeeping operations. This exercise is also unique in that it practiced the multidimensional nature of peace support operations 
bringing together the military, police, and civilian elements in an integrated approach. In this regard, we congratulate the countries and regions that have been involved in this exercise for availing the necessary resources and assets. It is indeed gratifying that we have carried out an operation of this magnitude on our own. This says a lot about our commitment to peace in our continent. We needed to do more to mobilize domestic resources to fund and capacitate our peace support operations, identifying and raising our own funds will ensure that we enhance the sustainability of our missions while at the same time ensuring ownership and self-reliance. Fellow Africans, today is indeed a historic day in the quest for African peace and security. We must build further on this milestone as we move towards full operational capacity. This exercise has also contributed significantly to consolidating the positive relationships not only between the different armed forces, police and civilian components that were involved, but also between the home countries of these forces. The opportunity presented by Amani Africa II exercise will also improve relations between the regional economic communities and the African Union on continental, at, at a continental level. Indeed, we are of the firm belief that the collective efforts of the military, of the military, police, and civilian components will be invaluable in providing an effective and credible response to humanitarian crisis on the continent. We congratulate all the forces once again for this success. We also commend the AU Commission for the leadership it provided as strategic headquarters <coughs> at its strategic headquarters level in Addis Ababa. As we continue to build our capacity, we will also continue to cooperate with the United Nations and with international partners as well as we strive for continental and global peace. Africa is proud of this achievement. We wish the forces from sister countries a safe journey home. I thank you very much indeed.
we call upon at this day the Minister of Defense of Mozambique, His Excellency Salmadon Munke, to come and make an announcement, to make, come and make his remarks as, on, as a representative of the chair of the Southern African Development Community Organ and Policies Defense and Security Corporation. Mr. Minister. Um, quite a historical day there, as indicated by President Jacob Zuma, who just delivered the keynote address. Well, right now um, we have all the troops who have been part of um, this exercise that has been taking place here at um, the Luhate Combat Training Center here in the Northern Cape. These are part of the 5,000 troops that have been part of the exercise since October the 17th, and they form part of the African Standby Force. It has been a long await, and it's finally here, it seems, sir. Uh, Captain Yaku. Yes, no, definitely. It started, as was mentioned, many years ago, 2008. And uh, from the military side, we are very happy to be able to have to uh, have, to have that this uh, display today to show the people that we are ready and then we we can go now. And and this is definitely a dis. Well, the Minister of Defence is now on the podium. Let's just uh, take a quick listen to what he has to say. Jacob Zuma, President of the Republic of Africa do Sul. Sua Excelência, Smile, Sergei, Commissário para Paz e Segurança, e representante de Sua Excelência, Kozazana, Jamini Zuma, President of the Commission of the Union African. Excelências, ministros e representantes das regiões econômicas da África, membros do corpo diplomático, caros generais, oficiais superiores, subalternos e praças, estimados convidados, minhas senhoras e meus senhores. Minha Excelência, Jacob Zuma, the President of the Republic of South Africa. His Excellency Mahir Sadi, Commissioner for Peace and Security, representing Her Excellency Nkosa Sana Zamini Zuma, the Chairperson of the African Commission, Excellencies Minister representing the African Economic Regions, Member of Diplomatic Corps, General Senior Officers, Warrant Officers, Permita-me expressar, em primeiro lugar, as minhas sinceras e profundas condolências pelo trágico assassinato do filho de Sua Excelência, a Ministra de Defesa e dos veteranos militares da República da África do Sul. Igualmente, endereçar os nossos sentimentos de profundo pesar aos militares do militar, aliás, aos familiares do militar perecido durante o exercício Amani África 2. First and foremost, allow me to express my sincere and deep condolence 
by the tragic assassination of the son of Her Excellency the Minister of the Military Veterans of the Republic of South Africa, and also to extend the same condolence to the family to of the soldiers who passed away during the exercise among the Africa too. Excellencies, é com profunda honra e emoção que nos dirigimos a vós por ocasião do epílogo do segundo exercício Amani África 2, fazemos-lo com alto sentido de responsabilidade, pois Amani África 2 abre uma página na história do continente africano que luta para se livrar dos males de conflitos e crises políticas. Excelências, it is with great honor and emotion that we address to you by the occasion of the closing ceremony of the Amani Africa Exercise 2. We address to you with high sense of responsibility once Amani Africa opens a page in the history of African continent which fights to get rid of all conflicts and political crises. Em 2002, a então Organização da Unidade Africana, OUA, foi transformada em União Africana, OUA. O posicionamento da União Africana é contra as mudanças inconstitucionais de governos e pauta pelo respeito ao princípio de soberania e de não interferência aos assuntos internos dos nossos países, assim como rejeita a indiferença perante as crises em massa que se perigam a vida dos cidadãos. Em 2002, a AUO foi transformada em AU. A posição da União Africana é contra o governo constitucional e tenta respeitar a soberania e a interferência related to domestic affairs of our countries, as well as to them, the lack of action with regard to the massive crisis which jeopardize our citizens' lives. Esta nova postura requer uma capacidade em permanente prontidão para apoiar os nossos países em caso de crises que ultrapassam as capacidades internas e, se necessário, intervir com todas as, as capacidades diplomáticas, polici policial e militar à disposição da União Africana. This new position requires a capacity of permanent readiness to support our countries in case of crisis to improve the internal capacity and, if necessary, intervene with all diplomatic, political and military capacity of African Union. É na base deste princípio que se criou a arquitetura africana para a paz e segurança, na qual a força africana em estado de alerta constitui um dos pilares estratégicos. By any of these principles that African, by any of these principles, African architecture for peace and security was created in which African standby force represent a strategic pillar. Excelências, estimados militares, polícias e civis exercitados, o exercício que hoje se encerra é o culminar de um longo e complexo trabalho que envolveu todos os africanos e parceiros estratégicos da cooperação. Excelencies, distinguished military, police and civilians, part of this exercise. The exercise that we are closing today represents the end of a long and complex work which involves all Africans and strategic stakeholders of cooperation. O exercício não só permitiu medir o estado da interoperabilidade dos, dos métodos, filosofia, táticas e culturas de cada região e países, mas serviu sobretudo para cimentar a unidade dos africanos.
The emphasis is not only allowed to assess the state of interoperability of methods, philosophy, tactics, and culture of the region and country, but also allowed to sentence the unity of Africans. Durante o exercício, poder identificar as potencialidades, capacidades e virtudes da arte diplomática e militar em pleno conflito, os desafios da manutenção da ordem no meio de profundas crises, observando o cenário 6 da União Africana, que consiste na intervenção em situações de genocídio quando a comunidade internacional não intervém prontamente. During the exercise, it was possible to identify potentialities, capacity, and virtues of all military and diplomatic uh, aspects during the conflict. The challenge of maintenance of peace and security as in a deep crisis, observing scenario six of African Union, uh, consists in intervention in the situation of genocide when the international community Excelências, com a realização deste exercício, os nossos militares, polícia e a componente civil escreveram um compêndio de li lições a fomentar nos nossos países e a partilhar nos nossos diversos estabelecimentos de ensino em matéria de cooperações de manutenção da paz. Excelências. With the conduction of this exercise, our military, police, and civilian companions have written a, a book of lessons which will allow to boost the knowledge in our respective countries, sharing the several uh, knowledge within our uh, training facilities uh, when it comes to peace operation issues. Nesta perspectiva, orgulhamos-nos ao tomar conhecimento de que o exercício, o exercício foi um verdadeiro sucesso, não só em termos puramente de uma força multidimensional, mas, sobretudo, pela qualidade de conhecimentos partilhados e amizades forjadas. In this perspective, we are proud on getting knowledge that this exercise was a true success, not only for in terms of of multi-dimensional dimensional force, but also related to quality and knowledge sharing uh, in the respective unit. A região da SEDAC agradece profundamente a honra e o privilégio a ser otorgado para acolher este importante exercício. The SEDAC region commands deeply the honor and privilege to be given the opportunity to host this exercise. Em nome da presidência do órgão da SADEC para a cooperação nas áreas da política, defesa e segurança, queremos estender os nossos agradecimentos a todos quanto tornaram este exercício uma realidade. On behalf of the SADEC uh, chairperson, we'd like to extend our sense of thanks for all those who did their best in order to become the exercise of reality. O nosso particular agradecimento vai à União Europeia, nosso vizinho imediato a Norte, pelo apoio concedido. Our special thanks is addressed to the European Union, our immediate neighboring on the note for the support provided to us. A todos vós que participastes, direto ou indiretamente, os nossos agradecimentos. To all of you who attended direct or indirectly, our deep thanks. A Comissão da União Africana, através do Departamento de Paz e Segurança, foi uma verdadeira máquina propulsora para este evento. Com ela, trabalharam incansavelmente os estados maiores de planificação das diferentes regiões. The African Union Commission, through the Department of Peace and Security, was a true machine of which drive 